Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the three different ways you could adjust white balance in Lightroom. Before I begin, just let me mention a couple of things because invariably I get asked about them. Uh, over in the left hand side, you'll see the exposure info uh, for the image. It was shot with a Nikon Z72 and a Nikon Z24 to 200 lens. Uh, you can see, yes, the ISO is 20,000. It was shot handheld inside in the evening, and you can see that the white balance is off. There's been no processing done to it at all. I highly recommend that white balance be done very early in your workflow because it's rather foolish to adjust color and tone on an image if you don't have a good white balance as a base to build upon. So do white balance first if possible. So yes, nothing has been done to this image. There hasn't even been any sharpening or noise reduction except for color noise reduction. I have that defaulted at 25. So uh, the first thing I would do on an image like this is white balance because it is off considerably. There's three different ways in Lightroom to adjust white balance. The first way is this little drop down. Now, if you're working on a RAW file, you'll have a large array of choices here. These are the same choices that would be in your camera for white balance. If you're working on a JPEG or TIFF, you're probably just going to have as shot and you won't be able to take advantage of using the drop down. Now this was shot in incandescent or tungsten light. So I would go down to the tungsten choice and correct white balance. And actually that is much better, almost perfect. So that is one way to do it. Just use the drop down and try to match the color temperature of the light that the image was taking under. Now, another way, Oops, don't want to use auto. Another way uh, to do it is to use the eyedropper. The idea of the eyedropper is when you click on it, your, um, your cursor will become the eyedropper. And you could see that um, you see the eyedropper and there's a pick target neutral kind of chart there. If you're not seeing that over here in the toolbar, this is this little uh, strip of real estate that is actually right above the film strip. If you're not seeing that, Hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key toggles the toolbar off and on. And then over on the left-hand side, you could see that there's a show loop. So if I click on that, you see that little uh, box or loop is gone. So if you don't like the box, just click there to get rid of it. Also, you'll notice that there's a scale of like squares there. You could adjust the scale like this. So you could see you could have smaller squares or larger squares, whichever helps you best uh, get a target to click on. Also, if you want to click numerous places like click and click and so on, you can see how I clicked once and it disappeared. I'd have to then activate the tool again. If you uncheck auto dismiss, you could click, 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 click to your heart's content. Now the idea here with this tool is you find something that doesn't have color in it preferably like gray. Middle gray would be perfect. White would be good as well. So what you need to do is just like on the white of his whisker, and you can see how that those little squares kind of help you actually click on something that is neutral. So I would click to correct the white balance. And if you don't like it because I do not have auto dismiss checked, I could just keep clicking until I find something I like. Once you're happy with it, you're done. You could just put the tool away. That leads us to the third and final way to adjust white balance. That is you just come in and manually move the sliders. The idea here is you would in this image, let's just go back to the original as shot. Um, it's a little bit on the warm side, right? So I'd want to cool it off. So the first thing I would do is go to the temp slider and move it to the left to cool it off. Now, if you find you're starting to get a color cast, like kind of a magenta color cast or maybe a green color cast, what you would want to do is move this slider the opposite direction of the color cast. You could see how the slider kind of shows the color there. 
So you'd want to move it away from whatever kind of color cast you your image has when you move the temp slider. So just manually moving those two sliders, that is a pretty good uh, white balance. That is how my cat Rocky looks. That's really the shade of his fur. Um, so I think that is pretty accurate. So that's the most difficult way, uh, but it has the potential to be the most accurate way if you trust your eyes. So those are the three different ways that you would adjust white balance when using Lightroom. And again, I suggest you do it very early when you work in your workflow. And it seems to work better on raw files, particularly if you want to use the drop down. So um, if possible, shoot raw, adjust white balance on your raw files. When I, if I sent this over into um, a third party application, let's say to remove noise, because there is, it was shot at 20,000 ISO. So there is some noise there. So if I shot it, or if I sent it to something, a different app to remove noise, when it comes back, it's not going to come back as a raw file. It's going to come back as a TIFF or a PSD, depending on how I sent it. Then uh, the white balance correction would be a little more difficult to do, and the drop down wouldn't have those full array of choices. So do white balance first, if possible, on the raw file. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.